today I don't want to preach at you. I really just want to share um, out of my heart what the Lord has been showing me and teaching me, and hopefully the Holy Spirit will speak a word through me. Amen? I love when people come and uh, want to give honor, and I think it's so kind. So I want to take a minute to honor my husband, Ron, and just thank him. Yes. Thank him for loving me and encouraging me to do things that I don't necessarily want to do or feel like I can do or should do, but Ron has always been one of my biggest cheerleaders, and um, I just want to honor him because this message today really came out of a message that he shared a couple weeks ago. You know, our series for this year, our theme for this year is uh, Build, and he talked about three different burdens, and I'll just go back to those. It was a burden for God's order in our lives, in our family, a burden for Coastal Chapel, and then the third one was a burden for prayer. And that burden for prayer has really been standing out to me. And I've really watched Ron live this out in his own life, um, just in his integrity and his burden really to pray for his family, to pray for Coastal Chapel. I've watched him come in here many days by himself and pray. And sometimes you might be the only one in your family that's willing to stand and pray. But can I encourage you? Stand and pray. Amen? Is anyone today carrying a burden? Anybody? A burden, a weight, a responsibility. If you have responsibility, you probably have experienced a burden at some point in your life. Not all burdens are bad. Not all burdens are negative. But sometimes I think we can just get bogged down by the weight of a burden. You know, maybe you are dealing with teenagers transitioning into adults. How many of you know that can be a burden? It can be a blessing, but it can be a real challenge at time, watching them um, maybe do things that you've told them their whole life not to do, or this thing will not be a blessing if you do it, and they just jump right in and do it. It can feel like a burden. Maybe it's a financial burden today that you're walking through. That's real, right? Every time I place an order for Costco for my family of six, it feels weighty. It's costly. Like, things are just different. I heard recently that uh, for a family of six, you're paying $22,000 more this year than you were last year just on food. Say, what? I'm like, and that's just on food. I saw Heather today with a bucket of grapes. I said, can I be honest? I have not bought grapes in four months because they are $9 a bag. And my son was like, can I have a grape? I said, he's been deprived of those grapes because his mom is on a budget. But that's real, right? There is a financial weight sometimes. Maybe it's a burden in your marriage. Listen, I have been there where I'm just like, this is so heavy and this is so hard and you feel like you're drowning. Forget being a good parent. You're struggling in your marriage. It feels weighty. You're maybe not able to see anything good outside of this burden that is weighing you down in your marriage. Maybe it's just feeling unworthy. Maybe it's a burden of where the enemy has lied to you. Fill in the blank with whatever type of feeling that is false. How many of you know we can feel things, but they're not always true? Sometimes that feeling comes and just smacks you in the face. Just grab it and throw it. And that sounds silly, right? But you know what we do? We grab it and we put a label on our head. Unworthy, insecure, insufficient, broke down, busted, disgusted. We don't do it intentionally, but we walk around with burdens, labels that others have put on us. Maybe it's a weight of comparison. Maybe you woke up on Mother's Day and scrolled through Facebook and look at everybody's happy Mother's Day pictures. And maybe the truth is you're not happy today. I said this in the first service. I'm always very compassionate and sensitive to the mothers who have lost, to the mothers who are waiting, to the mothers that guess what? Today is not happy. There's just a reality to that. And can I say that God is so near to the brokenhearted? May he be your comforter. May he speak to you something that no one else can speak today on this Mother's Day. There are weights. There are burdens in our lives. But can I encourage you today? We do not have to be weighed down by every single burden that tries to attach itself to our life. We have a choice. We have a choice. And today I want to talk about exchanging these burdens these weights for a burden of prayer. Amen? 
a burden to pray. You know, out of our prayer will come rest. Out of our prayer will come a peace. Out of our prayer will come a strength. You know, Jesus says that his yoke is easy and his burden is, you know, the burdens that some of us are carrying around are so heavy. We've been dragging them around for the last six months, some of us six years. I mean, if we were to get a picture of what we all look like with the burdens that we're carrying, some of us would look crazy. Some of us would have a whole U-Haul, not a mini one, a really big one, like you're moving cross country with all those burdens, but the burden of prayer will produce rest and peace and joy and strength. You say, what is a burden to prayer? It's an opportunity to be moved in our spirit to join the Father in prayer. What an honor that we get to join with Jesus in prayer. Do you know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me? He didn't have to pray for us. He doesn't have to. Our needs, our burdens, we have an opportunity to join him in prayer. It's a peculiar compassion. Have you ever woke up in the morning with someone so heavy on your heart and it cannot escape you? And have you ever called and said, I'm just thinking about you today. May I encourage you to pray for that person. The Lord is placing them on your heart for a particular reason. The Lord is giving you compassion for that person because he knows that they have a need. And it's not about you. It's not so you can say, oh, I'm so holy that God dropped you in my heart and I get to pray for you. It's so that we would point him back to Jesus. I remember being 19 years old and driving to FAU early morning to one of my classes, and I had met this woman for one time. I happened to get her number in church, and the Lord just dropped her heavy on my heart, and he said, you need to call her, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to call her. It's early. I don't know her. That's weird. Can I tell you that those are probably the places where you need to be obedient? When it feels awkward and it's out of your comfort zone, do it. Do it afraid, and so I just called her, and I said, I'm just thinking about you today, and she says, today I was going to take my life. Thank you for calling me. And from that day forward, I just knew the compassion that you feel for a person in a moment has nothing about you or your comfort. Please be obedient. Stop and pray. Reach out because you just never know what a person is facing. Someone's life may be dependent. In our prayers, we have a responsibility to pray, especially as mothers. God gave us these children. He entrusted us with them to pray. You know, it's funny because every night we sit around the table for dinner and I say, who's going to pray for dinner? And my kids will fight. I did it last night. I I don't want to pray. I did it this morning. And I'm like, it's not about checking a box. It's about talking to the Lord and your gratefulness for this meal tonight. But how many of the times as adults do we do that? I'm going to check the box for three minutes on the way to car and I'm done or on the way to work. And it's just easy to get in a rut. And I would encourage you to ask the Lord, give me a burden to pray, a burden for people. First for your family, here for the body of Christ. Maybe you're here and and you don't have kids or your kids are grown. The body of Christ, your spiritual family. Amen? So that burden to pray will produce compassion in you. It's peculiar. It's specific. It's personal. He's holding us responsible to pray, to pray for our children, to pray for those around us. Do you know that he trusts you with this task? Even in our lack of faithfulness, our lack of faithfulness to pray, he trusts us. Or even times where we've said, I don't feel like praying. He still trusts us with the task to pray. I was thinking about Nehemiah. You know, we've been talking about Nehemiah in this uh, series to build. And I just thought about how he went to prayer. You know, he was living a very comfortable life with the king. And, and people were, I'm sure, talking about the problem and the walls that had fallen down and how messy it may have looked and how bad it was. And how many times do we do that in our own life? We see the problem and we talk about it, right? We get together with our friends and we're like, it's so ugly. When is someone going to do something about that? Have you ever done that? That lady's kids are a mess. When is she ever going to get her act together? Y'all, some of y'all said it. Tell the truth. I'm the devil. (laughs) But I think about Nehemiah. He had a burden to pray. He went and he wept over the destruction, over the walls that had been fallen. And it had been decades and decades and decades. And you know what he said? Somebody's got to do it. It might as well be me. 
And I encourage you today, somebody's got to do it. And who's going to stand up and say, it might as well be me. You know what? If your husband is broke down and he ain't prayed in six years, you be the one to pray. Stop talking about him not praying and you pray. You get before the Lord and pray. Nehemiah said, it might as well be me. The Lord laid the burden on him, gave him compassion. And I think about how those walls were rebuilt and I think, like, 52 days. But did you know that he prayed and he fasted for four months? Some of us may still be praying for the same thing we were four months ago. Can I encourage you to keep praying? All is not lost. It might be four years, and in the natural, yes, that can be discouraging. That can be frustrating, but God hears every single one of your prayers. God is not sleeping. You can rest in the fact that God is working. God is orchestrating. God is moving things around for your good and on your behalf, whether it's four days, four weeks, four years, and one of you is not better than the other because your breakthrough happened yesterday, and you only had to pray about it four times, and you've prayed about it 4,000 times, it doesn't matter. And you know what I say when I've had to pray about the same thing over and over and over? Maybe, God, you're doing something in me for the next season of my life that I need. Maybe I need a little extra strength when old girl right here might not need it in the next season of your life. Because God knows what he needs for Teresa, and God knows what you need, Kathy, and God knows what I need. And guess what? It's all different. So we got to trust the Lord and what he's doing. Okay, we can't become envious of other people's breakthroughs, right? We get into that comparison trap, and you know, comparison always leads to insecurity. I'm doing less than, or pride, I'm doing better than. Because you don't know the hell they fought to get to where they were. You know, I think about Corey and Lene, when they stood up and gave their testimony, it was like, wow, praise God. And so many people were like, God, I want that marriage. But they went through some hell for years and years and years and years. And I'm sure they prayed on their face time and time and time again. That just didn't happen overnight or by happenstance. Somebody had to stand and say, it might as well be me. Sometimes I try really hard to not shout. Like I, I just say, I just want to be calm and just quiet. But I don't know. The, the shouting comes. Okay. It is an act of worship to serve and pray for your family. You know, it's so beautiful to come in on a Sunday and raise our hands and worship the Lord, and that's great. But you can worship every day in your home, every day in your job, every day wherever you go, when you serve your family, when you serve your coworkers, when you serve that one coworker that works your nerve, serve them, and serve them more than you serve the ones you love. That might be a word for somebody. Go and serve that janky one that agitates you every day. Go find a way to serve them. Because you know what? Jesus would serve them well. But you know what we do? We get in our self-righteous self. They don't deserve my goodness like we have any goodness to give. Share the love of Jesus. Amen? Something I say in my house, and this is so terrible. You know, I always tell myself, <laughs> I have so much laundry. Anyone relate to the laundry saga? I talked to my friend Tina like a lot of nights late at night, and she's like, I hear you with that OxyClean spraying your clothes. <laughs> and I say, oh, I'm just in my laundry quarters up here. And I'll say when I get, you know, overwhelmed, I'll say, I'm just a slave in this house. Has any mother ever said that? <laughs> my mom never said it. And sometimes I'm like, you know, my mom is just a darn saint. She was always her joy to serve our family. <laughs> and, you know, I see she says the other day, this is a side note, she said, Ron says, how did you raise such wonderful kids? And she says, you know, Ron, my mom, if you don't know my mom, she is like so sweet and pure. And she'll say, it was just such a blessing. <laughs> and, you know, it was just so easy. I have to tell you, Ron, it was so easy. And can I tell you, I just stood up and said, that is not my testimony. It is not easy. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> but that's great for my mom, but it was a blessing and so easy. Um, it is a blessing for me, but it has not always come easy. But I was cleaning the other day, and I had worship on, and I told Ron, I'm going to stay home and study this morning. And the Lord brought that to me. And can I tell you, I was very convicted, and I said, I'm no longer going to say that in my house, that I'm a slave. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he says, Aaron, you're not a slave, you're a servant. And I said, well, isn't it the same? <laughs> 
you ever have conversations with the Lord? And the Lord said, you are a servant of mine. And I was so convicted, like what a joy and honor it should be to be a servant of the Lord, to serve my family, to serve the body of Christ. And truly, Coastal Chapel, you are my joy. I love to serve. My kids are my joy, but we get in our flesh sometimes, right? So it was so, such a sweet moment. I called Ron. I said, I just love how the Lord works. And so I just said, I'm not going to say that. I repent for saying I'm a slave in my house because I'm not a slave. <laughs> and the Lord, we have a picture, just drew me over to my girls. They have a little dollhouse. Look how precious. The little babies, wait, go back one. They're all in their chairs and they're tucked in in their cribs and they have their diaper bags. You know, this is a mom. If you're a dad, just, you don't get it, I know. But this was so precious to me. And I'm like, look at my girls serving their little babies. And then the next one, I'm like, they got their washcloth bed set up. They got their pillows. They have their snacks, their brush. They live in a luxurious three-story doll home where they're well taken care of. They get three meals a day. And this is so silly, right? But in that moment when the Lord said, you are a servant, he drew me over to this dollhouse. And I said, it is a joy and an honor to serve my family. And look at my little girls serving their little silly dollhouse babies. <laughs> like, I know for some of you that's so cheesy, but like so sweet. So that was my conviction. It is a joy to serve our families. I want to talk about three things today that we're tempted to do, that maybe we do, but I encourage you to pray. When I want to complain, I will pray. Anyone ever complained in their home about anything? Yes. Even the children raised their hand. Yes. Uh, one night we had had just a wild afternoon with the kids and Ron enjoys to give our kids the sleep gummy <laughs> every once in a while when he's like, I'm tired, they got to go to bed. I'm like, Ron, it's a one minimum gummy <laughs> per week. <laughs> They're all natural. Don't worry. Don't call DCF on us. But we sometimes give them a sleep gummy and they had been arguing and you know, the house gets trashed and all the things. And we sat in the living room. I mean, we were just busted tired. And I was like, are they ever going to love one another? Are they ever going to get along? Like, my God, it is just exhausting. And I remember Ron coming, and he says, I have a vision for the family. And we're going to put it up on the board, and the kids are going to declare it. I think we have it here today. And it's very simple. The family vision, love God, honor mom and dad, love each other. But how many know those three things are very challenging for all of us, not just as children, right? And some days when they get arguing and they get going, Ron will say, go to the board, declare the vision. Because how many you know it's important what you declare in your home? I heard something recently and it hit me so hard. They said, if you have honor in your home, if honor is functioning in your home, you won't need as many rules. I told Ron, I said, oh my gosh, we got a lot of rules. Maybe we need some more honor. But I was just thinking, the Bible says, without a vision, the people will perish. Can I say, without a vision, our family might have some difficulty. The vision may look different for all of you. My kids are young. My oldest is 10. My youngest is 4. I would encourage you to pray, God, what's the vision you have for our family in this season of life? Put it somewhere in the house where everyone can see it. Share it. Pray it out. This is the most simple thing. It's very basic. It's not hyper-spiritual. It's not the book of Revelation. It's just a simple vision for your family to display somewhere, to declare a thing in your home. And you know what it'll do? It'll produce peace. You'll sense that there's less chaos. There'll be more joy. Amen? So when I'm tempted to complain, I will pray. Prayer shifts things. Complaining shifts things, but what? Into just a more rotten attitude. There's no gratitude when we're complaining. You, you cannot complain and be grateful at the same time. You can't talk about how awful your husband is and be thankful. You just can't. You can't talk about how crazy your kids make you and have a sense of peace. It just doesn't go together. So I will pray when I'm tempted to complain. The next thing, when I'm tempted to worry, I will pray. I want to ask you today, are you a worshiper or a worrier? It's difficult to do both at the same time. 
it's, it's difficult to raise my hands and say, God, I trust you when I'm worried about everything under the sun, when I'm riddled by fear. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, most of us are very familiar with this verse. Don't worry about anything. That is wild. It doesn't say you can worry about three things. Don't worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. Listen, they're going to come. The worries are going to come. I'm not saying be naive and life never happens. Obviously, we have responsibility. Sometimes difficulties come, but we have a choice. You know, I have a bend to worry. I have a bend to be fearful. I've talked about this with my mom. Some of it has been generational curses where I've had to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm going to take these thoughts captive. But a lot of times in the past, I've taken the thought and I've ruminated on it. I've dwelled on it. I've thought about all the what ifs and all the probabilities. And you guys have heard me share this. It's just become a totally different story to the point that you have anxiety and you're thinking about going, doing something crazy that you'd never do. Taking those thoughts captive, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you can understand. God's peace is possible. God's peace is possible. I don't care how chaotic your home feels. I don't care how chaotic your workplace feels. It is possible because you know what? You, you carry God's peace. You're a bearer of his peace. You can come on the scene and shift the atmosphere through God, of course. It's God's peace through you. It's God's strength through you. Amen? His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus but it has to be an intentional choice to choose peace. Because to be honest, it's been intentional where I've chosen fear, where I've chosen worry. You know, I called a, a friend, she's a woman of God, the other day, and I was saying, you know, is this, is this a sign from God? And I was just become so fearful. I almost felt like it was just this tormenting thing. It's funny because we have this fearless conference coming up, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I have wrestled some fears leading up to this thing. And Ron says, it's just the Lord working that word out in you. And I said, next year the theme is going to be peace. <laughs> I said, this fearless stuff, it's wild. Um, but I called this woman, and I said, man, I just feel tormented. And she says, Aaron, torment is not of God. And she says, and that's just a lying spirit, and that's the enemy. And she says, is God a good God? And I said, yes. And she says, do difficult things happen to his children? And I said, yes. And she says, well, you're okay, right? You're okay. And that sounds so simple, but that is a word for someone today. You are going to be okay. You are going to be okay. It may be really bad right now. Something the Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was preparing is, if you don't trust that you're safe in Christ's arms, you'll never be able to teach that to your kids. You could say it, but sooner or later, they'll know that you don't really believe that. They'll know that you don't really walk that out. They'll, they'll witness you being fearful. They'll witness you worrying late at night. You know, something I saw my mom do as a kid, I'm not saying she never worried or never had a fear, but she would wake up at 4.30 in the morning and she would pray. She'd open her Bible, she'd do her devotion, she'd put on her makeup. I have never woken up at 4.30 to pray, but, um, well, maybe not never, but diligently every day. And that is something to this day that I remember. My mom never told me, you know, Aaron, don't, don't be a worrier, get up and pray. But I watched her life. You know, our kids are catching things by our actions. You could say one thing and be doing a totally different thing. But if you don't trust that you're safe in the arms of Christ, you'll never be able to minister that to another person. And I want to ask you today, do you believe that you're safe in his arms? Do you believe that he's in control? And that leads me to my last and final point. When I catch myself being controlling, I will pray. Anyone ever had like a controlling moment? Nobody raised their hand. Bless you all. I have had some controlling moments in my life. We must relinquish control. Do you know what I used to think? If I worry enough, if I fix enough, if I manipulate enough, if I move things around enough, God may work on my behalf. You know what the Holy Spirit's like? You prideful beast. 
Stop doing that. You're running around like a lunatic, controlling everybody, bossing up your husband, being mean to your kids, being ugly to your coworkers, because you're controlling. And you know what I used to say? I don't want to control anybody. Aaron is so sweet. If you guys know me, you know I'm sweet. Oh, but I would do controlling things. Like, we'd have people over for dinner. I'd be like, Ron, sit down, light the candle, don't touch the chips. You can have the dip when the people come. Control. Oh, it was bad. The Lord's delivering me, honey. Amen? He's delivering me. I needed a louder amen on that, honey. Uh, um, And I'm laughing in that silly, but that's real, right? Why do we control? You know what the truth that I've realized in my life is that I don't trust the Lord. I stand here as the pastor's wife, knowing the Lord all my life, but there are moments, if I can be honest, that I am not fully surrendered, that I'm not fully trusting the Lord. That's just honest. And if we can get to the honest place, then the Lord can begin to work. Because you know what he'll say? Thank you for being honest. I've been waiting for you to let go of that thing that you've been so mad about for the last four years. That you're so bitter and ridiculed over. If you would just let go. Your control is holding you in a prison, trapped up. And the Lord says, relinquish control so that when you open those fists that you have clenched so tight for years to say, I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to build walls so high so that nobody can come in and offend me and bother me and hurt me again like so-and-so did. And that's real, right? That's so real. And I've done it. I've done it. You know, we talk about Nehemiah building the walls up. Some of us need to build the walls down and say, I will be the one to crumble these walls that I have built up in my life. And it takes a bold person to say, I'm going to tear some things down in my life. This hasn't protected me. This has kept me in a prison. And I'm miserable. And I'm missing out on the joyous life that God has given me. And how can I minister the love of God when I don't love myself? How can I say to somebody, you can trust God with your whole heart when I'm not trusting him with mine? And saying, God, I surrender. I repent today for every place in my life that I've taken the control. And I've put Aaron on the throne of Aaron's heart when God needed to be on the throne of Aaron's heart. When I catch myself being controlling, I will pray. You can take encouragement from the fact that our God is fully in control of all things. Because even when we feel like we're in control, He's always had control. And we're a child of God. Remind yourself that we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. I just want to encourage someone today to exchange the burden, the heavy burden, for a burden of prayer that will bring rest and peace Enjoy. Am I saying that it's going to be perfect? No. Am I, going to, am I saying that you're never going to face difficulties again? No. Am I saying that you might have to not do some work? No. You're going to have to put in some work. And that's necessary. But it's going to bring a settledness into your heart. Because if you're here today holding on to those things, your heart's not settled. If you took a, a true evaluation of your heart, you'd be able to say, My heart is not at rest. And God desires for your heart to be at rest. God desires for you to walk in his peace. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Amen. I want to read some prayers. We put these in um, the cafe for you to take today. And they're very simple. And maybe for some of you, this is where you're going to start. Maybe for some of you, you've been praying very specific prayers. I would encourage you, ask the Lord, God, what would you have me pray? You know, all of my kids are so different. My oldest son, my greatest prayer for him right now is, Lord, let him be a leader and not a follower. He's 10 years old. And 10-year-olds, they just do dumb, awkward things. Have you ever noticed that? You're like, ooh, what what are you doing? Or he's bringing home, like, weird sayings from school. I'm like, I got to Google. What does that mean? And then I'm like, oh, my God, please don't, don't, don't repeat it. And then I have a four-year-old who's just so full of joy in life, and I pray, God, never 
Never crush, let her spirit be crushed. Let her always be full of your joy. My daughter, uh, Stella, I call her my trailblazer. She literally walks around in boots all the time and she wants to do her own thing. And sometimes it's difficult because I want her to do what I want her to do. Um, and I just have to say, God, just shape that into leadership. You know, let her use her voice for good. Let, let her not go down the wrong path and her will. You know, whatever the prayers may be, maybe your kids are out of the house. Continue to pray. I want to encourage you spiritual mothers and fathers. We need spiritual mothers in the house. Amen? You know those things that a lot of this younger generation says, that's so lame and that's so cheesy and that's old-fashioned. No, we need that. You know what a lot of it is? The Word of God. The Word of God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not going out of style. We need it for every ounce of our being and every ounce of our life. And we need people to stand up and say, I'll be a spiritual mother. My kids are grown out of the house or I don't have kids, but I'm going to pour my life into the next generation because this culture is wilding out. Our kids are finding their identity and all kinds of craziness. No, you got to find your identity in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. When culture says you can find it in being a monkey or you can find it in being fill in the blank, no, it's Jesus. And we need spiritual mothers and fathers that say, I will, I will be the one. Like Nehemiah stood and said, it might as well be me. And you know, we need to say, I'm willing to learn from that generation. I need that wisdom. I don't know everything Ron talking about. I'm qualified. I'm the least qualified person to stand up and say anything to you today. We need the voice of wisdom in our lives. Some of you know Chris Campbell. She's been at some of our women's conferences. I text her this weekend. She's not married. She does not have kids. And I text her Happy Mother's Day because she is a mother in the faith. She prays like nobody else. She is a warrior for the kingdom. She is pouring out her life in her singleness to people over and over and sharing the word. We met at Panera Bread several months ago, and I was dealing with something very difficult, a betrayal. I had shared with her, just feeling broken. Chris Campbell opened up the word, prayed over me, and we took communion in a Panera bread with tears coming down my face. And I said, this is priceless. This is priceless. This woman doesn't even have kids, and she's here at a Panera bread, praying with me and pouring her life out. It's a beautiful thing. You know what? You say, God, I don't know who I could pour my life out to. Find someone more busted than you. That's the one. That's the one. And that's funny, right? But you just find someone a little more jacked up than you and say, let's do life together. Let's open the word. Let's talk about what we're going through. So here's some simple prayers. Lord, I pray that you would remind my children daily that your love for them is everlasting. And I remind you today of God's unconditional love. There's nothing that you could do or not do that God would love you any less or any more. Cultivate a grateful heart within them. Help them speak the truth to others and to themselves. Fill them with joy and peace. You know, there's a lot of kids, kids, eight, nine, wanting to commit suicide. Where's the peace? They have felt the pressure that I never felt. You know what I was doing at eight, nine years old? Watching Winnie the Pooh. These eight and nine-year-olds are out on TikTok showing themselves for the world to see. My heart breaks for these kids. This is a reality. It's not going away. We have got to stand in the place and say, I will pray. I will pray. I will prophesy over these kids. Make them a blessing to everyone they meet. You know, we can't confuse blessings and burdens because, you know, a blessing can be heavy because it's a responsibility. If you're here today feeling like your children are a burden, I want to remind you, it's a blessing that's heavy. It's a responsibility. I think every year about the mothers who we have lost or not had, and I think how dare I ever take for granted the blessing of my children. Help them to listen to your word and do what it says. May they never walk away from you. Draw their hearts closer so you'll always be near them. I heard this recently. You cannot protect your kids from their testimony. We all have a testimony. We've all walked through challenging things. And did you know that as a mother, I try my hardest so that they don't have to experience those things? Why? Because we know it hurts. We know the pain that we face. 
but we can't protect them. We can do the best we can, but you know whose control we give them into? The Lord. I trust the Lord with my kids. You know, this year I was particularly saddened and grieved. I really had to grieve the innocence of my kids, the stuff that they have come home with in third and fourth grade. I have to be honest. I would sit on my couch and say, I want to call the principal. I'm feeling so grieved. How is this real? These kids are eight, nine years old. And Ron says, Aaron, I think it's just, it is what it is right now, unfortunately. But you have got to amp up your trust. When you drive off of the school parking lot, you've got to say, God, I trust you. Come, whatever may happen, God, I trust you. And it's going to be okay. Amen? I just want to take a minute to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for Nehemiah's example of standing and saying, it might as well be me. I thank you for that burden to pray, God, where we would sit and we would have an urgency to pray, where we would feel compassion to pray, where we would know it is our responsibility to pray, God. And I thank you today that we're laying some of those burdens down. Holy Spirit, as you speak to each individual, God, what is the burden that you would have us lay down today? that we've carried so long, and today we're willing to say enough is enough. I'm exchanging this weight. I'm exchanging my bitterness. I'm exchanging my control. I'm exchanging my need to be right, my fear, and I'll pray. God, when I feel afraid, I will pray. When I'm tempted to complain, I will pray. God, make us people of prayer. God, lay that burden on our heart. May Coastal Chapel be a house of prayer. May Coastal Chapel be a house of prayer. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering like only you can, God. I thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. May our hearts be encouraged that all is well, that we're safe in your arms today. In Jesus' name, amen.